Hey all, and welcome back to my channel. Let's move right into code. We have our form to add a post, and we're listing out our post list below it. And let's expand it a little bit and take a look. The styling is already looking great thanks to React Bootstrap. Now let's minimize it and move over to VS Code and into Post Form. Now let's hook up the form so that we can actually add posts to the list. We're going to do this with JavaScript. JSON Placeholder does offer mock API calls to add a post, but since they don't persist, I thought it would just be better to do this programmatically with JavaScript. Since the post state is held in the app.js file, this is where we're going to make our add function. Let's call it add post to list. And this will take a new post. We can call set post, which takes an array of posts. So what we'll do is we'll add the new post and we're going to spread over the current list of posts. Let's move down into our return statement, find the component post form. Let's add the prop add post to list and set it equal to the function that we just created. In our post form file, we'll be calling our newly created function and handle submit. But first, we need to deconstruct add post to list off of props. Posts have both a body and a title, which we'll include here, but as we saw earlier, it also has an ID. We could bring in a package to create unique IDs, but for the purpose of this video, we're just going to use JavaScript math random. We're going to multiply that by a thousand and add 100. And we'll explicitly coerce all of this to a string. This should be unique enough for our purposes today. Let's move on over to our form in our browser and test out our new function. It looks like it worked. It was added to our post list. Again, keep in mind we're not using a real database, so the data will not persist when you reload your app. Now that we're able to add posts, let's handle deleting them. Let's declare a function called delete post. It will take one parameter and that will be the ID of the post. Let's receive it in props in our post list component, where we will add a button to trigger the delete. In our card, Let's add a card footer, and we're going to put the button inside. We'll title the button delete. Our button will take a variant prop of danger, which gives us special styling provided by React Bootstrap. Now on the card footer, let's add some inline styles. Let's align the button to the right and add a little bit of padding. In the on click of the button, will pass delete post with the current post ID. However, this function doesn't do anything right now, so let's fix that. Let's refresh the page and make sure that everything is rendering okay. Yep, that looks good. In app.js, let's finish writing the logic for the delete post. Here we'll use set post with a function as an argument. We'll get the previous post, and now we can use the JavaScript higher order function filter. This will return an array of all posts that do not match the given ID. Let's head back to post form, where in handle submit, we're going to clear the title and the body. We do this simply by calling set title and set body with an empty string once we've added our post to our list. Now let's try this again. We're going to create this new post. I actually forgot. We should also set checked to false. Since once submitted, we want the form to close. Let's also make sure that we set the initial state to false. Okay, it looks like our functionality is working as expected. Let's fix up the margins. They're a little bit excessive. We'll change the last two rows from a margin of 60 to a margin of 20. Yep, that looks a lot better. Let's add the behavior where we can click on the post and have a modal come up to display the whole post. Let's head over to the bootstrap docs again and look for the modal component. If we scroll down it a little bit, okay, let's take a look at this one. I think this looks like a good option for our simple app. 
Let's create a new file called postmodal. We, of course, as usual, need to import React from React. And now we're going to import modal from React Bootstrap. Also, as usual, let's do a default export of our component, which we'll call postmodal. And let's take props as a parameter since we know that we'll be receiving some information from app.js. We'll start by deconstructing post ID from props. In the return statement, let's start with initializing our modal using the docs as a guide. The modal component takes a show and an onHide property. For show, we will pass in a Boolean to signify if the modal should be or should not be open. OnHide will take our function to set the show state to false, which will close the modal. Both show and handle close will be coming from app.js, so let's deconstruct those also off of props. Next, we'll add a modal header that conveniently has a prop close button that we will add, and this will display an X in the header tied to our handle close function. In the header, let's also add a modal.title. Within the modal title, let's add post.title, which we'll be handling in a minute. Now let's also add a modal.body tag. And in here, you guessed it, we're going to display the post.body. Oh, I just realized I made a little typo up there. Let's change that to post and not post ID. Now you may be wondering, where is this post coming from that I'm referring to? Well, for that, we're going to need the help of use effect again. So let's import it from React. And I actually know that we're also going to need use state in a minute. So let's also import use state from there. Let's create our boilerplate code for use effect. And let's head on over back to JSON placeholder. So in the docs, let's look for a fetch API call again. And we're going to copy and paste this over into use effect. We're going to transform the URL into a template literal because we'll actually be inserting the post ID to get the specific post that we're looking for. So let's do that now. And then with a dollar sign and curly braces, let's add our variable. Our API call will return the specific post that we're looking for. Let's create a piece of state to store that. So we'll call it post and of course the setter function as set post. And then that will all equal use state with an initial value of null. Now within our fetch call, let's change the console log to set post. This component is looking good. Let's head on back to app.js. Let's create a function that will handle the logic for opening up our modal. And we're just going to call it display post in modal. In this function, we're going to take a post ID. Let's open up the docs to the right page so we can use them as a reference. As you can see from the docs, we need another piece of state. And let's just follow their example and call it show. We're also going to need the setter function, which we'll call set show. And we're going to initialize that to false. Now, the other thing we're going to need, according to the docs, is a close modal function. We're just going to call it close post modal. In the function, let's set show to false again. Let's add our newly created component, post modal, within our container as the last component. If I remember right, I think that I named the closing function differently in post modal. Let's go correct that right now. Okay, now back in app.js, we can pass the close modal function as a prop. Let's make sure that we're importing postmodal from postmodal in the same directory. And let's also add the show prop to our postmodal component. Next thing we need to do is finish up our display post and modal. Now we know that this is going to take a post ID. We're going to need to create a piece of state for this post ID with a setter function, and it'll all start off as an empty string. Now in postmodal, the first thing that we'll do is pass in the post ID to set post ID. Secondly, we will set show to true. Once we have the post ID, we can pass it down as a prop to the modal. 
Where are we going to get this post ID to pass to display post? We're going to get that in the post list file. Let's pass it down to post list as a prop. And in post list, let's make sure to deconstruct it off of props. Let's find the card body inside of the map. And on click, we're going to call display post in modal. And we're going to pass it the post ID. It's been a while since we checked out our app. Let's click on that tab now. Hmm, okay, there's an error here. Oh, right, I forgot to change the name in the body of the function, I think. Yep, that's it. Okay, so now this is the error I was expecting. This is happening because we get post from an asynchronous action. This means that the code will continue to execute even though we're still waiting for post. And by the time the component renders, the value will be undefined. There's a fix in the newest version of JavaScript called optional chaining. To do this, you just add a question mark before the reference point, and this allows for the object to be undefined. Another fix for this, and good practice in general, is to add a spinner to let your user know that they're waiting for data. Let's head on over to the Bootstrap docs again and search for spinners. This one looks good. Let's just copy it so we can use it in a little bit. Now, first in our use effect, we definitely don't want it to run every time. And that was my bad. We're going to add the set post because it's contained within the use effect and the post ID, which is the value that we'll be changing. Right under use effect and before the return statement, Let's do a conditional check on if post exists. And I'm going to paste in the spinner that I grabbed from the docs. And let's not forget to return that. And let's not forget to import it from React Bootstrap. This allows us to remove our optionals. You can always leave them in there as a secondary check. Now let's create a blog and test it out. Great. So we were able to create a blog. We're still able to delete them. And of course, we can display them in our new modal. It looks like everything is still working. Now let's head over to app.js. And here we're also going to add a spinner. Let's add a new piece of state called loading and the setter function as set loading. And we'll start that value off as false. Now we're going to use the set loading property within the use effect. First, we'll set it to true. This is before we fetched any data. And then once we have fetched the data, and saved it into our posts, we'll set it to false. I will leave the implementation of the spinner in this component up to you. Basically, just follow the steps that we did in PostList, and you should be fine. In our dependency array, we now have to add the two setter functions that we're calling within useEffect. Those are set loading and set post. Let's expand and take a look at our work. It's looking pretty good, but I'm not super crazy about the delete button. I feel like it could look better. Let's look for React Bootstrap icons. The link will be in the description. And in the search bar, let's look for trash. All right, we're just going to copy and paste this over and replace the word delete with this SVG. And there you go. Now we have a trash icon instead of the word delete. If you were coding along, congrats on finishing your first React app. You've accomplished a lot and you should be really proud of yourself. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment. See you in the next one.